Good morning. Okay, so today here, here's what we're going to go through today on this video. We're going to talk about a couple different types of factoring. So some of it is just review of factoring. Feel, for, feel free to fast forward through some of the stuff if you remember all this stuff. Um, difference of perfect squares we're going to talk about. Um, we're talking about why you factor, factor typically to sometimes just a factor, and oftentimes you, you factor in order to solve. Sometimes you have to do some simplifying before you factor, okay? Um, you're going to have two delta math assignments today, and that's it. There's no book work, okay? So it's the one for 7-2, and then there's one for 7-3, okay? Okay. Um, First thing I want to look at is you've all heard the term FOIL uh, when we distribute. So basically factoring is basically unfoiling or undistributing in a more general sense, undistributing um, two things, two or three things that are multiplied together or more than that. So if you have something like X plus three, X minus five, that's factored form. You learned a long time ago, the way that you multiply that out, you multiply the firsts. So your first term is going to be the first two multiplied together. Your last term is going to be the last two terms, the minus 15. And then your middle term is a combination of your outers and your inners. So usually you do it in the order of foil. Firsts, then outers, that's the O in foil. Then inners, that's the I in foil. And then the lasts, that's the L in foil. Okay, so your outers is minus 5x, and then plus 3x. Those should be like terms. If these are both simply x's, these will be like terms, uh, assuming these are both constants. Okay. So then you'll combine those two middle terms, minus 2x minus 15. Okay. Let's look at just one more example. I'll go a little quicker. x plus 7, x plus 2. And you can do this faster. Your firsts are the two x's multiplied together. Your last term is the two constants multiplied together, and that's the plus 14. And then your outers gives you 2x, your inners gives you 7x. 2x plus 7x gives you plus 9x. Okay, let's look at one more. Um, now you might have x minus 5 times x minus 5. Notice this is a perfect square. You could write this as um, x minus 5 quantity squared. Okay. Now, when we multiply this out, our first two multiplied together give you the x squared. Our lasts gives you minus, uh, or I'm sorry, minus 5 times minus 5 gives you plus 25. Your outers is minus 5x, and your inners is minus 5x. So you get minus 10x. Okay. So that's going to be a pattern. That's a pattern. Anytime you have a perfect square binomial, first term is squared. That last term is going to be a perfect square, okay? And then that middle term is going to be double whatever these two things multiplied together are, okay? Because your outers end up being the x times the negative 5. Your inners end up being the negative 5 times x, okay? You have two of those, so you double it. Okay. Now let's look at a special case. Let's say we have something that looks very similar to that, but instead of x minus 5 times x minus 5, we have x minus 5 times x plus 5. Now let's look at what happens. When you multiply the first two together, you get x squared. When you multiply the last two together, you do get a perfect square, but one's negative, one's positive, so you get a minus. Negative times positive gives you minus. Now let's look at our outers. We get plus 5x, and then we look at our inners. We get minus 5x, right? So if you ever have something that almost looks like a perfect square binomial, except that sign in the middle is different, you can see that your outers and your inners cancel out, and you just get basically the first two x's, which is x squared, and then the last two numbers, which is another perfect square, and you have a minus in between, okay? That's called the difference of two squares. So let's talk about that for a second. Difference of two squares, okay? That happens anytime you have x minus a constant and then x plus the same constant, okay? That's the difference of two squares. So this thing, when you 
undistribute, that's called factoring. So if you started with this and you wanted to factor, you hopefully will recognize, okay, look at this. I have two terms that are both perfect squares. X squared is a perfect square. That's X squared. 25 is a perfect square. That's 5 squared. And it's called a difference when you have a minus in between them. So anytime you're factoring the difference of two perfect squares, okay, um, you can just take the X. You know the first two terms have to be X's. The last two terms have to be 5's to get the 5 squared. And then you're going to have a plus and a minus. Okay. So another example of that, let's say we've got y squared minus 81. Okay. Well, that's y, that's a perfect square, and that's a perfect square. So you get y minus 9 and y plus 9. Okay. Now we can mix it up and make it a little bit more interesting. You're going to get things like, I don't know, let's say 16 w squared z to the 6th minus, and then let's do, um, I don't know, let's do 625 uh, k to the ninth. Uh, let's not do k to the ninth. Let's do k to the tenth. Okay. Is this a perfect square? And is this a perfect square? Okay. Well, let's try it. Let's see if we can put something in here where we have this thing squared gives us this. Well, we would need a 4, we would need a W, we need something squared to give us Z to the 6th, so that would be Z to the 3rd. This thing squared, this thing times itself, would give us 16W squared Z to the 6th. Okay, minus, is this thing a perfect square? Well, square root of 625 is 25, and then square root of K to the 10th is K to the 5th. So we do have the difference of two perfect squares. So we can factor this as 4WZ to the third plus 25K to the fifth times, well, I'm going to run out of space here. I'll write that also. I don't know. Well, we'll put it over here. And then 4WZ to the third minus 25K to the fifth. Okay, so you're going to have some examples like that, difference of two squares, in um, the second one, the second 7-3, the second delta math one, the 7-3, okay? Now, another thing I want to look at is when we are, uh, so we know this thing, I don't love the term FOIL because FOIL only works when you have a binomial times another binomial, where you only have firsts, outers, inners, and lasts. But oftentimes you have something more complicated than that. Okay? You might have something like x plus 1 times x squared minus 3x plus 3. Okay? You, you have to do the same thing. You have to distribute. You have to take each term in the first um, polynomial and multiply it by each of these. And then you have to take well, each of them. So then you need this one multiplied by all of these. Okay. So you have firsts, but then this one's not a outers. This is the first and the second, and then the first and the third. So FOIL only works in a very specific case when you've got two binomials. Otherwise, it's called distributing. It's always called distributing. So here you get x times x squared, x cubed, and then x times negative 3x, so minus 3x squared, and then x times 3, so plus 3x. Now the 1 plus x squared plus 1 times negative 3x, so minus 3x, and then we've got 1 times 3, so plus 3. And of course, you're going to combine your like terms. The x squareds will go together. You've got x cubed. Uh, minus 3x squared plus x squared, so minus 2x squared. And then plus 3x minus 3x. Those are like terms. They add up to 0x, so you can leave that out. And then the plus 3 at the end. Okay. Okay. So we're not factoring here. We're basically unfactoring. We're distributing. Okay. Something like this, you could try to factor into that. Um, we will talk about that later. We're not going to talk about that today.
okay? Um, another problem like this, because you will have problems like this where you would just have to multiply it out, okay? Now, another one, you might have to multiply three binomials together or two binomials and a trinomial. Let's say you have something like x plus 2 times 3x minus 5 times 2x minus 1, okay? You might think this is more complicated than it is. You might think, oh, I have to distribute each of these to everything. Well, you don't. You just distribute these two. So I would multiply the first times the second, and you can think of it this way. Think about if you have something like 2 times 3 times 5, okay? Do I multiply? How do I do this? I think this one's pretty straightforward. You know you multiply the 2 times the 3 and you get 6, and then you get 6 times 5, and that just equals 30, okay? You don't take the 2 and multiply by the 3 and also take the 2 and multiply by the 5 and somehow multiply those together. Okay? You don't distribute multiplication over multiplication. That's not a property. You distribute, distribute multiplication over addition. For something like this, you distribute multiplication over addition because that's a property that holds. But you don't distribute multiplication over multiplication. You simply multiply the first times the second. You take that product and multiply by the third. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to multiply these two together and then take that product and multiply by this. So these two, it is a binomial times a binomial. So we're going to distribute. We're basically going to FOIL. x times 3x is 3x squared. Now we've got our outers, minus 5x plus 6x. Okay? Minus 5x plus 6x gives us plus 1x. And then 2 times negative 5 gives you negative 10. And then you multiply by the 2x minus 1. So each of these terms has to match up and multiply with each of these terms, and then each of those products you're going to add together. So 3x squared times 2x gives you 6x to the third. 3x squared minus 1 gives you minus 3x squared, and then plus x times 2x, so that's plus 2x squared. And then x times negative 1, so minus x. And then the negative 10 times 2x, so minus 20x. Negative 10 times negative 1 plus 10. Then combine your like terms. You've got a couple of x squared terms. Minus 3x squared plus 2x squared is minus x squared minus x minus 20x minus 21x and then plus 10. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about, we've talked a little bit about factoring, how you factor the difference of two squares, but we haven't talked about the basics, um, how you factor something that's like um, just a simple trinomial, okay? Um, for instance, let's say you've got a trinomial, you've got something like um, x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay, and you might get this problem just says to factor. You might also get something like this, x squared minus 10 equals 3x, and it might tell you to solve. So these are different problems that you basically do the same way. This thing we're just factoring, we're turning into two things multiplied together to give us this. Okay, I know you know how to do this. The two, first two are going to be x's because two numbers multiplied together to give us this term. These two numbers will multiply together to give us the negative 10. So we've got a 1 and a 10, or you've got a 2 and a 5. Okay. We know that the outers and the inners have to add up to negative 3x. Okay. So we that sounds like it's going to be a 5 and a 2. Okay. We're really looking for two numbers that multiply, multiply to 10 and add to negative 3. Okay, so that's probably how multiply to this number, add to this number. But you have to understand the reason why you're doing that. When you FOIL, you're going to multiply these two together. That's the only constant you're going to have in all of your terms. So that has to multiply to negative 10. The outers and the inners, that's a 5x and a 2x. Those are your two linear terms, first degree linear terms, that are going to add up to give you the middle term. Okay. 
So a minus and a plus. Okay, you can always double check that. Multiply it out in your head, x squared minus 5x plus 2x gives you minus 3x and then minus 10x, perfect, okay? Now, this one is basically the same problem, but it says solve. Okay, first of all, we're gonna solve by factoring. We're gonna move that 3x to the left side of the equation, subtract it from both sides. Now it's equal to zero and it says solve. It doesn't just say factor. We have to solve this equation, find all values of x that make this equation true. So now we're going to factor. We know this factors into x plus 2 and x minus 5. Notice this is the same polynomial as this, equal to 0. And now we have one more step. We're going to use the zero product property. So x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 5 equal to 0. So you're going to get x equals negative 2 and positive 5. Okay, zero product property, whether this factor or this factor is zero, either one, not both, either one, if either one is zero, that product is going to be zero and it makes this thing true. Okay, now let's look at another example. You're going to have one other type where you're factoring a trinomial, but your lead coefficient, your A value is bigger than one. So you're going to have one exercise where A is always one, one exercise where A is bigger than one. For instance, you might get something like, I think this is actually a problem I took right off of Delta Math. So 5x squared plus 10x minus 9 equal to 3x minus 3. It says solve by factoring. First of all, we have to get everything on the same side of the equation. So 5x squared, subtract the 3x, so we get plus 7x, add 3 to both sides, so minus 6 equal to 0. Okay, now you've got this. There's two ways to do this. Um, if this A value is small enough, I typically would recommend doing this by trial and error. Um, if you can't figure it out with trial and error, I'm going to show you something called uh, splitting the middle term, which you've probably heard of before. It's a good thing to know, but when the numbers are small, I think it's just easier to understand how to undo foiling distributing and just come up with your two binomials okay if these two are going to multiply to give you your highest degree term the first term 5x squared you know it's got to be 5x and x okay there's only two factors to the number five one and five integer factors right um the, these two last have to multiply to negative six so negative six what multiplies to negative six you've got a couple choices a one and a six Either one of these, one of them has to be negative, and you've got a 2 and a 3, okay? So do we think we want a 1 and a 6 or a 2 and a 3? Now, this is the trial and error. You've got to kind of play with it. So I could try 1 and 6. My outers will give me 30x. My inners give me 1x. That combination has to give me 7x. Okay, that's way too much. So I could try a 6 and a 1, okay? So my outers would be 5x and 6x. There's no way to get 7 out of 5x and 6x. Okay, so it's probably not 1 and 6. Let's try the 2 and the 3. 2 and the 3. And when you get better at this, you don't have to write it all out and erase it every time. You can kind of play with it. So that's going to give you 15x and 2x. I don't think we can get 7x out of outers 15x and inners 2x. Let's switch places, the 3 and the 2. Outers 10x, inners 3x. Okay, that works. 10x minus 3x. So that would have to be minus. This would have to be plus. And let's just double check that that works. 5x squared, good. Plus 10x minus 3x is plus 7x. And then that last is going to give you minus 6. Okay, now it says solve by factoring. So we have one more step. 5x minus 3 equal to 0 and x plus 2 equal to 0, so x equals negative 2. And then we get 5x equals 3, so x equals 3 over 5. You've got those two answers, okay? Now, I will show you how to factor this by splitting the middle term, okay? If you don't like trial and error, let's just split the middle term, okay? We'll go back to this question right here. If we want to factor this, okay? So we bring that down here. And this is called splitting 
the middle term. Okay, so I've got 5x squared plus 7x minus 6 equal to 0. Now, my middle term is the 7x. I want to split that middle term. Okay, but the way, I've, the, the way I have to split it up, I first am going to multiply the, the lead coefficient by the constant. So 5 times negative 6 gives me negative 30. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to positive 7. Multiply to negative 30 and add to positive 7. Okay, so that's probably, let's see, 10 and 3 plus 10. 10 times negative 3. And if I add multiplying those together, I get that. Adding those together, 10 plus negative 3, that works. Okay, so now, this is where it gets tricky because the only reason we're using these two numbers, the 10 and the negative 3, is to split the middle term. So that 7x splits up into positive 10x minus 3x. Okay, bring down the minus 6, bring down the plus 5x squared. Okay, uh, now I'm going to group the first two terms and group the last two terms. What can I factor out of these first two terms? I can factor out of 5x. So 5x times parentheses x. 5x times x gives me 5x squared. 5x times 2 gives me 10x. So 5x squared plus 10x. Okay, these two, I can factor out a negative 3. So minus 3. Negative 3 times what gives me negative 3x? I get an x. Negative 3 times what gives me negative 6. I get a plus 2 equal to 0. Okay. Now we're still not there. And the only reason this works is because this first thing has a factor of x plus 2. This second thing has a factor of x plus 2. They have a common factor. So since this quantity, this expression, this thing has an x plus 2 in it, I'm going to and this one does, I'm going to factor out the x plus 2 from both. Okay, so x plus 2 times what gives me this thing? Well, that's the 5x. x plus 2 times what gives me this thing? Well, that's the minus 3. Okay, so it really just looks like you're pulling out the x plus 2 from each of these products. This is a product and this is a product that they have a common factor. You're putting the common factor out front. And then what's left is going to be the 5x minus 3. So basically what you're thinking of, you're taking this entire thing, multiplying by this, that gives you this, this entire thing, and you're multiplying by this, and that gives you this. Okay? And it simply looks like x plus 2 and 5x minus 3 equal to 0. That is exactly what we got up here, 5x minus 3. And x plus 2, they're in a different order, but that's okay. So from here, we would set each of those equal to 0 and solve. All right? Um, now, as you work through the two delta math assignments, um, they, they can show you sample, uh, sample solutions, and they can also, you can watch the videos for some help. All right? Hope that was helpful.